Welcome to Pod Strangely Warmed. I'm Daniel Hawkins, your host today, and it is summertime in Texas, which means it is hot. Yesterday was 105 degrees, and, and that means for many of us that we try to escape Texas during this time of year. I know I'm super excited to make the New Mexico mountains uh, here in about a month, and it will be wonderful. Uh, while many of us are looking at vacations and trying to find different ways to escape Texas in the summer, our folks from Project Transformation are diving deep into active, ongoing ministry, and that's what we're going to talk about today. We are joined today by Lynn Rhodes, the Executive Director of Project Transformation, and Rosie, one of our chief interns. What's your official title, Rosie? Site coordinator. Site coordinator. Uh, Rosie, you have been with PT for four summers now. So either it's terrible and you just make bad decisions again and again and again, or there's something really good to your spirit, to your soul. Uh, and, and that's part of what we want to explore today. Uh, Lynn, for those of us who don't know anything about PT, how would you describe project transformation for, for somebody who's just hearing about it for the first time today? Yeah. So a lot of people say to me, oh, is it a literacy program? And mm. uh, that's the, kind of the first place that I start. It's not really a literacy program per se, but what it is, is it's a safe space to do day camp for children in neighborhoods so that uh, they can come and have fun. It's not school, but they're learning. We call it sneaky learning right. because we use a curriculum that is fun, but it's engaging. We're working with them to do social emotional learning skills, which is um, very important for them to be able to regulate their emotions. And we do have a component that focuses on literacy because literacy is important. You want kids sure. reading on task, right? Uh, and so we hire college age young adults uh, to implement our program for us. And we host it in churches, uh, primarily United Methodist churches in each of our chapters so that they can have a deeper connection to their community and, and function at a deeper level. So it's kind of a hard elevator speech because there's a <laughs> lot of moving parts, <laughs> you know, and uh, I, I find that it really is four C's. The fourth mm. C is community. Okay. I mean, that's a huge, huge part of what we're doing is we're not a program that comes in and occupies a space. Mm. We're a program that partners with, and then it becomes this very nuanced, what does this community want and need and see for itself? Yeah. So it's a, a coming alongside and a building of deep relationships. And we hope to walk with these kids for a really long time. So we like to stay in one place for as long as we possibly can so that the kids are able to grow through all of their elementary school uh Levels. So we work with first grade through sixth grade. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, as they age out, our goal is, since we're a younger chapter here in the Central Texas Conference, our goal is to then age with them into junior high school and then eventually oh, cool. into yeah. high school so that we have a continuous program through all of their uh, years, which I, I think would be so cool. I know that's true for some of our older chapters. And so we have that same goal. Very good. You mentioned four C's, and I think I heard for sure one of them, community. Yes. The the other three are children, mm -hmm. churches, mm -hmm. and college-age young adults. That's right? correct. That's the intersection of those four things. And yeah. as you were talking about sneaky learning, yeah. uh, I, I couldn't help but think of you know all the mom blogs that are telling you how to sneak like uh, – cauliflower into macaroni and cheese and, you know, all of that kind of stuff, right? It's, it's, yeah, that's us. <laughs> that, that's y'all. Okay. Okay. Uh, what a powerful experience though, to invite young people. Cause you want to talk to an educator. You, one of the things they say is summer learning loss is a real deal. And especially coming out of the last couple of years with education disruptions due to the pandemic and any number of other things, we're at a particular season where this kind of ministry is deeply needed, um, but also kids need that community of people who care about them, right, who are consistently there for them. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that all the studies show is that if a kid can have one adult mm -hmm. outside of the people who are supposed to, who cares about them and is invested in them, right, it makes all the difference in the world. And, and Rosie, you're a four summers person. And now, have you been at the same site for all four of those summers? Sadly, no. Okay. I had two with university. Then my last one before this one was Meadowbrook. And then this year I went New Riverside. Okay. Mm -hmm. And New Riverside is a new site this year. Yes, it is. Tell me a little bit about launching something new. Wow. It was an experience. Um, of course, like the pastor there, Armando, he's amazing. Like I tell you everything about him. He wants to be engaged with the kids, with this tag time that we have with them. He always wants to be able to be involved with that, and we enjoy him. Yeah. But also, as far as like just connecting with us, he always wants to make sure we're taken care of. He wants to make sure he's interacting with us on a daily basis, but he's also making sure we're supported in every way possible, which is amazing. 
That is fantastic. What what does a standard day look like for you as the site coordinator at New Riverside? Yeah, so a little bit about being a site coordinator, it starts off as thinking of it as like a principal in the aspect. Okay. Um, because we check in, we talk a little bit with the parents, making sure that they feel comfortable and welcome. Um, then we get the chance to move around, oversee what they're doing in all the classrooms. Um, also get the chance to kind of be in a component sometimes. I will go in and sit with the kids, kind of do some of their assignments with them, making them feel a little bit more engaged, um, read with them sometimes. Um, but outside of that, I get the chance to talk with my interns, make sure that they feel motivated to do what they're doing and feel prepared because sometimes they might feel like they're not doing the best. And I'm always able to see from outside looking in that they may not feel like they are doing everything that they can, but they really are. We can tell mm. that they're loving their kids. Yeah. They're making them feel like they're capable of being where they are. And they always feel like at the end of the day, the kids love them. So that's always what I ask for. Amen. If we can leave with kids knowing that they are loved, right? And mm -hmm. invested in. That's a huge, huge deal. What's the the biggest difference for you between your first summer and your fourth summer? Oh, right? huge difference. Uh, you know, Lynn talks about investing in college age young adults, right? Yeah. And cultivating leadership and mm -hmm. and part of what we're aiming for here, right? Is is I loved on the last episode of the podcast, right? The uh, ministry incubators folks referenced that Howard Thurman quote, right? Of giving people a crown to grow into, mm -hmm. right? Um, how is your experience different year four than year one? I would say that quote speaks for itself for okay. my experience with PT because okay. I started off as just a general intern um, doing all those components with the kids. So feeling like more like a teacher. And then eventually I moved up to a site coordinator my second year. And that was shocking because me in the leadership position already made me nervous. But I felt welcome and very confident after a while. Um, yeah. And then the year before I did the um, house pastor position and I was like, this is a lot because mm. I get to oversee all the interns and that year it was the COVID year that we first had and I was so afraid that it wouldn't feel the same mm -hmm. um, of course it was a little different it had a lot of differences but it was able to give everybody a chance to kind of slow down and look back on what we were really here for like mm -hmm. of course we're looking at the literacy but giving back to the families yeah. was so important at that time so I was glad to be in that house pastor position to be able to work with the interns and make them feel well adjusted to what the change is looking like um, but also coming back this this year was a huge like change for me coming back to do site uh, coordinator again because mm -hmm. I was like well I've done this before but will it be the same because it's a different team different yeah. site and it was and I had to take that into consideration that it's going to be a different growth for me to kind of see myself doing the leadership in a different space in a different headspace and knowing yeah. now that I can actually do this is surprising to me I shock myself every day so I'm like well Hey, if you want to do this, this is something you can do in the long run. Continue doing leadership roles and yeah. take it in and say, well, hey, you can you got this. You got this without saying, well, I don't know. I might have to step back. Yeah. Well, that is such a fantastic thing, because giving that uh, the thing I love about that quote, right, is it trusts. Right. There's an inherent trust that says, I mean, because when I think about uh, at 19 years old, I was a really bad youth director. Why on earth I was ever hired to be a really bad, well, they didn't hire me to be a bad youth director. They just got a bad youth director at 19, right? Uh, why on earth, right? And yet each one of those steps is a learning process, right? Each one of these summers has been a, in, in, in all the different roles, right? It's one in which, you know, you are growing and you are thriving and all of a sudden New Riverside is thriving this summer in a way that it wouldn't um, without you. And, and 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 you are here in part because of the experiences and things you've had over the last couple of years. And so um, is there one specific moment that comes back where you look back and go, oh, they trusted me with this? Why on earth did, you know, and yet here you are, and yet, you know, it came into being, you made it through. Yeah, um, it first started off with my kids because I was very shocked to hear some of them be like, Oh, you're the side coordinator or you're the you're the principal and they were like really surprised to kind of see somebody like me in that position. Mm. Of course, like I'm not like the youngest one, but of course they were like, "Well, you look like you. You also talk the way you talk." And I was like at first a little like, "Okay, where are we going with this?" But right. after a while I was like, "Well, I can tell they feel a little inspired a little bit." Mm. And then with my interns, they kind of said, "Well, I wouldn't know what this summer would look like without you." And I was sitting there just sitting there in awe. Because I was like, first, it starts with the kids. But then when you hear from your interns, you're kind of like, mm, 
Yeah. Don't make me emotional. I'm oh. going to cry. <laughs> so yeah. I was like really surprised to understand that I was doing a big difference from a lot of different places. And it just touched my heart to hear that. Such a powerful thing, right? Because here you are having been invested in, and now you're investing in the other college age young adults too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. It, it's that mutual investment. It's that growing in leadership that we see that does, that is good for you today, but also it will be interesting to see what God does with that in, in the years to come. Mm-hmm. Lynn, uh, you, you get to embody what I think of as the preacher on mission trip role where you swoop in yeah. um, and you check in on things and sometimes you bring snacks. Um, <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about your experience this summer in particular. I know we've been growing out of kind of the pandemic summer and, and the number of kids participating in each each group is growing each year and the program is kind of building. You named one of the goals is to kind of have it grow and age up with the students as they mm-hmm. age up. But give me a window into what this summer looks like. Yes, it's been a really great summer. Uh, I have to say, this is just such a great group of interns. They're fantastic. And one of the things that I think you touched on that I think is really important is when we hire college age young adults, we don't assume that they come with all the skills intact. Mm. And I think that's different. I had one of them say to me last night, you know, you take a risk on us. And it's because all of the job applications that they've filled out say, you know, three years experience, two years experience, right? And so we know that going in is that these are these are skills that you're going to develop on the fly. And that can be really nerve wracking. And so we're at site all For the time. For everybody ta- involved. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so we're at site all the time uh, mentoring and encouraging and nurturing because our job isn't to step in and do the job for them. It's to empower each intern to be able to lean into their skills and their assets Um as they have them, because each each intern has a unique set of skills and assets. So mm. watching that develop and grow is everything. So I have uh, one intern, and she is uh, going to be a teacher, and okay. I can tell she's going to be a great teacher. So she thought this would be a perfect internship for her. So she is at a site that has an awful lot of uh, young ones. Okay. So they have a yeah. lot who are just not yet readers, but going to be readers, and They've missed some of the education they would have gotten because of the pandemic. And so she set up a classroom and set up a lot of uh, different tasks and things for the kids to do. And she called me one day almost in tears, like happy, happy tears. She's like, Mm. I had my first child read a word, read words. And it was just like this moment where she's like, I can do this. This is the greatest moment ever. At that same site, I had another intern who said, you know what, I want to do an exercise on coral. I want them to learn everything about the ocean. And she spent so much time cutting out little coral pieces (laughs) and prepping this lesson. And the artwork turned out beautiful. And she got to lean into her unique and particular skill, Mm. which was very different um, than than some others. And I I love that. I love that because we work from an asset-based understanding of everything rather than a deficit base. Mm, We're We're not trying to see what needs to be done to shore people up. We're asking, what is everybody's God-given gifts and talents, and how can we come alongside and help uh, create safe spaces and help resource those so that everybody can um, live into that, you know? Yeah. So we watch that with our interns. It's a beautiful thing, and I'm watching them grow, and I think there's probably too many stories, but um, yeah, it's fun. It's fun. And we love to have guests if anybody ever wants to come and take a tour of site while it's happening. We'd love well, to have and, and that. that's where kind of my head was going next, right? Yeah. One of the C's is churches. Right, it and, is. and when we when you name that you're an asset based kind of understanding of things, right? You mm-hmm. look at what skills and gifts and opportunities are there already, and, and utilize those rather than mm-hmm. trying to make it all fit in a single box, right? I would imagine that the church partnerships look a little different from site to site. Mm-hmm. Um, what what are you looking for when you're looking for a church partner? And what are some ways that, because, you know, sure. this is the annual conference podcast, so a lot of people <laughs> who are listening to this are like good churchy people, right? What are some ways that churches are partnering with PT mm-hmm. um, to invest in this work, right? Because sometimes in churches, we we try to recreate the wheel and make everything our program rather than saying, look, PT's better at doing these five things than we are as a local church, so let's partner up with you guys and invest in the mission and ministry uh, through you guys, right? What are some ways that churches can connect in that one of your four C's? Yeah, so, and I do think you're right. In some cases, it's kind of uh, uh, unique to each church and what they can bring to it. But in general, 
Uh, partner churches either provide uh, resources such as curriculum supplies, maybe food for the interns. We feed them. Um, <laughs> our, our goal is to make sure that a college student can put most of that uh, stipend that we pay them away and hold on to mm. it. So one of the ways that we attempt to do that is we provide housing, we provide pay, and then we provide most meals so that they can truly hold on to that and keep that. Um, so it takes, it takes a lot of people helping to make that mm. happen. So we have folks bringing food every night. Uh, we yep. have folks that are supplying um, all kinds of things at site, snacks. We have them providing uh, books. We take in lots of books. Right now, I will say we have more books than we can do anything with. So maybe we're going to wait a year on taking books in. But that's just generosity, right, yeah. to have yeah. all of those books. We have volunteers who sort the books, who code the books, who build libraries for us. Uh, we have folks who uh, volunteer for Family Fun Night, who just provide mm. human resources yeah. of serving food and playing games. Uh, of course, I know we've... we're hosting family night yeah. at the Bedford location here in a couple of weeks, and it's going to be a lot of fun. It's a big block party. It's yeah. a celebration of everything that has gone on, right? Yeah. So everybody's there. The staff is there. Um, the, the the site folks are there. Um, the hosts are there. All the partners, the kids, the parents. It's a chance for everyone to get together and just celebrate what we've done. But in addition to that, you can volunteer to read, which mm. is a huge thing. Uh, it takes – our promise is, is that every child will read – one-to-one -one with a volunteer every single day that they're in our program. Mm. That's a huge difference. That's about yeah. 25 hours of one-to-one -one reading that a child can get. So our, our literacy dosage is pretty high compared to other summer programs, which is super exciting. Yeah. So a lot of volunteers, that's why they think of us as a literacy program. That's one of the main places they right. might engage. Uh, but there's so many others. And then, of course, there's financial support because we're a nonprofit. It sure. takes money to keep the doors open and keep all the wheels rolling. Say what? Yeah. <laughs> so that's another way that a lot of partners support us is okay. uh, either through taking up funds as a church or putting us in their in their budget. So that's always really great. Very good. Very good. And one of the things I'm excited uh for family night that's coming up here in a couple of weeks. I'm so glad uh, you're doing it. <laughs> the, uh, uh, our Tongan community has taken the lead in, in kind of organizing that for us. And so it's going to be luau themed and there's going to be a whole roast pig uh, cooked in the dirt. And, you know, it's going to be good. It's going to be so exciting. It's going to be quite tasty. Um, yeah. You know, my inner fat boy is rejoicing and it's <laughs> quite, quite fantastic. Uh, and, and I hope and pray that it's an experience like one of the unique things about our Bedford community, right? Is that mm -hmm. we're this multi-ethnic, multilingual community and part of what we're intending with family night is to express that in a way that um, connects to the kids, connects to the community and, and makes a real difference. Yeah. Um, one of the things that separates you guys from being just a literacy program, right, is that there's mm -hmm. some faith introduction and faith formation work that happens over the course of the week. Talk to me about a little bit about what that looks like. Yeah. So we do, as Rosie mentioned, we have something called tag time, which of course is an acronym for talk about God. Okay. So that is built into. I didn't know yeah. if, if we were just like running around outside. Tag you're it. Tag you're it. Okay. But okay. makes more sense now. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it's built into the curriculum. It's first thing in the morning, and it's a chance to sit down when the the, the kids are just ready to go. So first they have a, a harambe, which is a, everybody gets together and moves, and mm. uh, you know gets up and dances or whatever the the curriculum suggests for that day. And then after everyone's checked in, they have a chance to sit down and talk about God. And so we connect uh, character traits and character building uh, through Bible stories during this tag time. And sometimes our interns really enjoy leading it. Uh, some of our interns come from faith-based backgrounds, and they're like, yes, this is what I want to do. I want to lead tag time. Other times we have clergy who come. That's one of the ways that our church's partner yeah. is, is somebody's like, I want to come and do that. Other times we have the host pastor, like Armando, really loves to come in and build those relationships with the kids because we're inviting our host churches to build deep relationships with the families in the community. And tag time is one of those ways to do it. Mm. So it's really creative, but it yeah. is part of our curriculum. And we, um, we have a, a curriculum that is internal to Project Transformation that serves all nine of our chapters. Okay. And so that is, that's written in-house by Dr. Julie Wilkie. And she does such a phenomenal job of really thinking through how to connect uh, kids to a great curriculum, but it's something that's adaptable by interns, which I find is a hard job that she does well. I'm glad she's doing it and not me. Yeah, uh, it, it's it's <laughs> not, a, not a simple task. Uh, Rosie, I am so excited uh, to hear what you've already shared with us, right? It is such a gift to, to be able to, to hear about your growth over these last four years, right? Yeah. Um, 
what is different about PT, having lived in it for four years, than you thought you were signing up for four summers ago? Man, um, I wasn't expecting it to be more like we always stay together kind of thing. Mm. Like, of course, like you can move around and do everything that you want, it's, but it comes to remind you like you're back at school. Um, okay. But you get the chance to build that community even more. Um, sometimes you might get a group of people that don't mind being around each other all the time. Then you get others that are like, I don't want to be here at all. So I'm going to mm. leave when I can. But every summer they like to stay. Everybody okay. wants to be together. Yeah. They always want to act like, oh, let's separate for a little while. But then eventually I get that phone call. Can we meet up? Can we do okay. this? Let's hang out. And I love that because for me, I love building relationships. I love community all the time. But just getting a chance to see the dynamic difference is hilarious because sometimes I'm always the person that's like feeling like the mother of the group sometimes because everybody's like, oh, She's going to make sure we're fed good. She's going to make sure we have a good time. But she's also going to make sure that, you know, we feel like a family eventually. Yeah. So I love the chance to just spend time with them as much as I can. Okay. Yeah, we have an intern community. And so every Wednesday night we get together and do something in community. And last night we had a karaoke party. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah, it was a lot of Hilarious. fun. <laughs> and Rosie cooked. <laughs> I did cook. Oh, it's nice. Yeah. Was, what was, was on the menu? Uh, salmon and shrimp. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Next, next time, you know, I'm gonna make sure. Lynn's got my number. Make <laughs> sure, make sure I get that invite next time. That sounds really good. The uh, karaoke night that is mm -hmm. fantastic and mm -hmm. fun, and a sign of real trust within a community. Exactly. Because uh, you don't karaoke if you don't trust people. <laughs> you don't. Uh, it just doesn't happen. So, well, very good. Thank you for giving us a window into that. Right. And and you mentioned that we house our interns. Part of uh, mm -hmm. I believe that happens at Texas Wesleyan, right? It does. And it so does. They are a great partner. Texas Wesleyan works really hard to make sure that we have a solid place to house our interns and that they're well cared for. So we're happy to partner with them. Our office is there as well. So Well, there you go. Mm -hmm. it, it helps that way. And it helps create those connections and relationships, right? Everybody yeah. goes out to their sites and then they come back and it does create that kind of community. Uh, Rosie, I'm, I'm curious, what's next for you after that? You got... A, school uh, mm -hmm. coming in the fall? And then what are sort of long-term life plans? What, Where is this investment that uh, PT is is uh, making in you? Where, where do you see it flourishing in the future? Where do you hope to use these skills that have been cultivated within you? I am personally trying to become a counselor one day. Oh, nice. Um, so right now I go to Dallas Baptist University. I'm studying to be a professional counselor. Um, so eventually I do hope to get into that world and step into that role of being a somebody's counselor. Um, but I do want to have my own practice one day. So I feel like this chapter has been amazing to me by making sure that every year I learn something new about myself. Oh. But also in the leadership side, I'm like, you know, the confidence level is high. Like mm -hmm. I started off my first summer like nervous, shy, don't want to speak at all. But now they have really opened my heart, but also opened my mind to kind of think differently about myself. And I feel like that is what is going to mm -hmm. take me to the next level is making yeah. sure that, you know, I learn the skills and the tools that can prepare me to become a counselor one day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you've proved to yourself you can do hard things. The hard things. Right? Yeah. Man. Working with Lynn. Trust me. <laughs> I, I did it for five years. It's it's a hard thing sometimes. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, well, very good. I'm so thankful um, that you've said yes for four summers in a row uh, to PT. Uh, and I'm so thankful for the environment that we've created, right, that helps invest in future leaders that will help shape and form our community. Um, and, you know, I, I hope that in the small way uh, that the work that these last four years helps those who you counsel for the next 40 years, right, yeah. uh, and, and those who you help come alongside and, and enter into a space of thriving. Um Lynn, if there was any lasting message that you wanted people to hear today uh, when it comes to uh, ways to connect to PT or just the heart of PT, what would you want people to hear as as kind of the final thing if they heard nothing else today, right? Hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, we we love what we're doing. We just mm. we just love it. I mean, this uh, this chance to build community from the idea of starting at the table uh, that's really important. I, I think that for years and years and years, there was an idea that you would sit down and get an idea and craft that idea and then present that idea and hope that people came. Mm. And I, I don't see that as the way to build community. And so PT takes it really seriously that it's important to uh, engage the community and ask who's not at the table 
Mm. Create the table, sit down and yeah. talk about what could a site look like in a community? Who needs to be there? What are the unique things that go into that? And uh, how can we build something that's uh, sustainable, that's mm. safe, yeah. that is diverse, that embraces everybody's assets, uh, and that has longevity? Mm. And I think that's an interesting and, and, and maybe new way to approach things. Uh, it shouldn't be new, but I think it is new because we have a tendency to really like our ideas. <laughs> we, we're great at creating problems yeah. and then creating solutions for those problems. Yeah, yes. uh, instead of letting everybody weigh in and then craft something that everyone's excited about. Yeah. And so I think that's what makes us unique is each site, as you mentioned with Bedford, each site is unique. It has yeah. its own uh, personality, its own community, its own uh, desires, uh, its own goals. And I think we're the kind of organization that uh, says, here's the table. Mm. And I love that. And I, I love what we do with our young adults. Uh, we didn't mention Friday experiences. Uh, that's one of those unique things that I think um, a lot of partners don't have knowledge of is that uh, we're a Monday through Thursday program. Okay. On Fridays, we dedicate our time to our young adults. And so we try to connect them to different uh, organizations, different professional situations, different people who they can network with in professions they're considering. So oh, cool. uh, Rosie visited Lena Pope this summer and made some connections uh, for counseling, which I think are really important. And I think that investment is really helpful. I've had college students say, I've not had anybody just say, this time is for you. Mm. So... Yeah. We walk this fine line between ministry and employer, and it's really important to show grace, to show love, and to make it safe in an environment that our young adults can thrive in as well. Um, yeah, and and that's important to us. I mean, I, I say that because that's important to, I think, the ethos of who Project Transformation is. Yeah, it's one of your four Cs. And and. What, what I have loved as I've gotten to know more about PT, right? It's because when you went to work for the Dallas chapter is when I first encountered PT, mm -hmm. right? Um, and then you came home, and we're glad you came home. Um, but there are many organizations where, you know, whatever the catchphrase is, right, or the stated values, it's, it's the catchphrase mm -hmm. rather than the guiding um, principle. Mm -hmm. For PT, those four C's are the guiding principles. It's investments in community. It's it's partnerships with churches. It's investments in college age young adults and in the kids, and mm -hmm. that shapes and forms the entire thing. And that, from an outsider looking in, is is one of those things that, as I look for somebody to partner with, right? As we seek to do the work of transforming the world, you know, one life at a time, mm -hmm. um, that is huge. And so I'm thankful for you, Rosie. I'm thankful uh, for you and for your fourth summer. Good luck being the principal. I hope you have an assistant principal who gets to handle all the like, you know, if you know school dynamics, the the right. the 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 head principal doesn't actually have to deal with discipline. That's the assistant principal's job. I hope you've got one of those. If if you uh, and and Armando can handle it. If 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 not, just just yeah. just tell him we we said he could do that. But. Um, Again, thank you for investing your summer in the kids around here. Uh, thank you for investing your life in kids and college aging adults. Um, and thank you for joining us today on Pod Strangely Warmed. It has been a fantastic episode in the middle of the summer. I hope you are finding a fifth C at some point this week. It's called cool. Uh, I hope you are finding some way to avoid the heat. Um, and I hope you stick with us this summer because next week on the podcast, we are launching into a series in which we are talking to our college ministry folks uh, from around the conference and around the Central Texas area, looking at how do we continue this conversation of engaging and investment in college age young adults as we prepare for back to school. Lynn, thank you for being here. Rosie, thank you for being here. And until next time, I'm Daniel Hawkins, and this is Pod Strangely Warmed. Did we say coherent things? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's always the fear is it's like, in my yeah. brain, it sounds like words, but maybe to others, it sounds like salad. Mm -hmm. right. You never know. No, seriously. You're like, oh, does this mesh together or did I repeat myself? Yeah, yeah, that's it. It's all good.